Hi, welcome to the Health Score Longevity Report. My name is Nick. Each week, I'm gonna provide you with one tip you can do to increase your lifespan. All the tips are based on the best evidence available in the medical literature. This week, we're talking about alcohol. Does alcohol affect lifespan? I strongly encourage you to find out your health score. The health score assessment includes all factors that are proven to increase lifespan. When you take the health score assessment, you find out exactly where you stand with respect to modifiable factors for increasing lifespan. And it's free, so there's no reason not to check it out. You can find it at healthscore.thinkific.com. This week, we're talking about whether or not to drink alcohol. And if so, what type and how much? The study I'm basing today's recommendation on was published in The Lancet. The Lancet is the highest impact factor medical journal of any I've come across, impact factor of 202.7. We'll turn to that study, but first I'm gonna give you some background. General common knowledge is that Drinking alcohol in moderation, especially red wine, is good for your heart. This is, comes from the French paradox. A population that has a diet high in cholesterol and saturated fat, but a low rate of cardiovascular disease. The hypothesis is that it's the red wine in the French diet that protects the heart. When it comes to guidelines for how much to drink, the US guidelines recommend not more than two servings a day for men and not more than one serving a day for women. The standard definition of a serving is 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, or a shot of spirits. The study we're looking at was published in April 2018. It was a systematic review and meta-analysis. It included 83 prospective studies. Study participants came from 19 high-income countries included 599,912 adults. At baseline, none of the adults had cardiovascular disease, and the median follow-up across all the studies was seven and a half years. The researchers found that compared to seven drinks or less of alcohol consumed, all-cause mortality increased as alcohol consumption increased. You can see from this graph, as alcohol consumption per week increased, so did risk of mortality in the follow-up period. The researchers estimated years of life lost as for someone, compared to someone who drinks seven or less servings of alcohol per week, half a year of life was lost for someone drinking eight to 14 drinks, a year and a half of life was lost for someone drinking 15 to 24 drinks a week, and four and a half years of life were lost for someone drinking 25 servings or more per week. This is shocking because the common knowledge is that alcohol in moderation is good for you. But this study showed that when it comes to all-cause mortality, there isn't a benefit to low consumption of alcohol. The lower the alcohol consumed, the better. And beyond a drink a day, there was an increased risk of mortality. We can see why in the past, there's been this idea that drinking in moderation is good for you. If you look just at cardiovascular disease, which the researchers did in this study, it does in fact show that compared to less drinking, there is a moderate amount that's better than less when it comes to cardiovascular disease. But cardiovascular disease fails to include cancer and other outcomes that cause mortality. So studies that focus just on cardiovascular disease might show this benefit to moderate consumption, but when you look at all-cause mortality, it's clear that the less you consume, the better. And consuming above seven dr drinks per week causes increased mortality. Another fascinating result from this study 
was that they actually looked at individual outcomes under the umbrella of cardiovascular disease. And they found that alcohol resulted in a decreased risk of heart attack. So if you're just looking at heart attack, the more you drink, the better. On the other hand, if you look at other cardiovascular disease outcomes, stroke increases with increased alcohol, coronary disease, except myocardial infarction, increases with alcohol, heart failure increases with alcohol, and death from other types of cardiovascular disease increase with alcohol. If you only look at risk of heart attacks, you would come to the conclusion that the more you drink, the better. But in fact, cardiovascular disease is a set of conditions and most of those conditions are made worse by alcohol. Only heart attack is made better. And in the aggregate, any amount of alcohol beyond seven servings a week increases mortality. Further fascinating results from this study are that when the researchers controlled for HDL cholesterol, the benefit of alcohol in reducing risk of heart attack disappeared. And when the researchers controlled for blood pressure, the harm from alcohol for stroke and other cardiovascular disease conditions, including heart failure, disappeared. What this tells us is the main benefit of alcohol that accounts for its re resulting in a decreased risk of heart attack is that it increases HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. On the other hand, the harm from alcohol leading to heart failure and stroke and other cardiovascular disease stems from the way it increases blood pressure. Another fascinating discovery by the researchers was that the type of alcohol matters. As you can see from this graph, for any given amount of alcohol consumed, wine was associated with the lowest risk of premature death, while spirits and beer resulted in a relatively higher risk of death for the same amount of alcohol consumed. The researchers also evaluated whether it mattered if the drinking occurred over the week or was concentrated only on a couple of days. For any given amount of alcohol, it was better to be consumed on three or more days a week rather than two or less days. So the typical pattern of just drinking on the weekends was actually shown to be harmful compared to drinking in moderation across the week. To further look at the concentration of drinking that might occur in a week, they looked at binge drinking, comparing people who drank seven servings or more on an occasion. And binge drinking, shown in red, was associated with a much higher risk of death for the same amount of alcohol consumed. The takeaways are, one, consuming less alcohol is better, and beyond seven servings a week, there is an increased risk of mortality. Two, the individual outcome of cardiovascular disease, while it does suggest that increasing alcohol consumption can be beneficial to a certain extent. This is explained by reductions in myocardial infarction or heart attack, which are caused by an increase in HDL. However, the effect of alcohol on heart attacks is countered by the harm of alcohol on other cardiovascular disease outcomes, including stroke, heart failure, and other cardiovascular diseases. And this is most likely due to the increased blood pressure caused by alcohol. In the final analysis, though a moderate amount of alcohol consumption is beneficial for cardiovascular health, for all-cause mortality, which trumps any particular cause of death, it's better to drink less. This is a really important point because the the evidence that you're gonna hear in these reports only are from studies that assessed all-cause mortality. And what this study shows 
is the risks of just looking at one outcome. If you just look at heart attacks, you would be convinced that it's better to drink more and the more the better in terms of a decreased risk of heart attack. But when you look at all cause mortality, when you include all factors that are affected by alcohol consumption, you end up concluding that alcohol is only tolerable in small amounts. And the more alcohol, the higher the risk of death. The takeaway is consume seven servings of alcohol per week or less. If you don't drink, don't start. There's no benefit to consuming alcohol when it comes to all-cause mortality. Select wine over beer and spirits. And aim to drink alcohol over three or more days per week rather than concentrated in two days or less or on a single occasion. This recommendation is part of the health score assessment, which is a global assessment of everything you can do to increase your lifespan. It is free and it is available at healthscore.thinkific.com. Check it out, please. If you like what you've seen here, please subscribe to this channel. Please give me a thumbs up. Thank you and see you next week.